Chris Mygor here. Welcome to the first episode of The Serious View, a podcast for screenwriters with a dream. Now, today I had the privilege and honor to sit down with Boris Cole, who has placed highly in various competitions, and he had some incredible insight to share with all of us. He told us about his story and just some, again, some incredible advice. So if you are a new screenwriter with a dream, I think you definitely have to pay attention to this because this is gold. Now, without any further ado, here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Serious Writer. Today's guest is Boris Call, and who decided to get serious about screenwriting 10 years ago, and he's still going strong. Even though he didn't study screenwriting, and English was his second language. He was able last year to get not one, but two screenplays among the finalists of the Story Pros International Screenplay Contest. In this episode, we're going to find out exactly how he did that. And Boris, thank you so much for taking the time and be here with us today. It's my pleasure. Hi, everybody. I hope uh, you'll get something out of uh, my experience. That's the whole uh, idea. Happy to share anything with you. Awesome. I, I just like you guys, I can't wait to hear what we can learn from Boris. Uh, but first of all, let's get to know you a little bit, Boris. So why and how did you get into screenwriting? Uh, why? Uh, I think I've, I've always, always loved movies. And I think that will be like one of the most common answer you'll hear from all right, like screenwriters. We've always loved movies. Like from the age I was able, allowed, to, to go to the video club all by myself, like 14, 15 years old, and, and rent VHS for the weekend. And the video club was my go-to place. I would spend like hours with the guy talking about movies. Then I would, I would rent like 10 movies, watching it in three days, then go back and rent another 10 movies. I think on average, I may have watched at least one, at least one movie a day, every day, for, what, for 30 years. Wow. So. I've always loved movies. I've always wanted to be part of the movie business. For the longest time, I thought, hey, I want to be acting. Then I realized yeah, that, that's not for me. I, uh, I don't like the spotlight. I don't like to... I've never really been like a, the most social person. Awkward at parties. I don't even know what to say. So acting, yeah, it was a nice dream, but like, no, that's not for me. And um, I got sidetracked. I became a DJ for 20 years. And to me, that was, that was storytelling. The, the way I built my DJ sets had a clear beginning, middle, and an end. Uh, I had that intuitive knowledge of how the night should go. Uh, you build up, then you bring them to a plateau, then, then you bring them back down gently, and then the night is out. Um, and one day, I, I decided uh, I have to stop talking about wanting to write. I have to start writing because nobody's going to give a million dollars just because I have ideas. I have to have something on paper that they can read. And uh, that's, that was yeah, a little bit over 10 years ago. I decided, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go and write screenplays now. Wow, that's, I, that's incredible. I, and I you're bought, a DJ. I, didn't, I had no idea. And you just said you were an introvert and didn't like going out there. Like, I, I know, I get this party picture. It's, yeah. I know, it's weird because I've, 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 I, well, these days I haven't been DJing in, in a couple of months because of the, the whole virus situation. You know, I don't know when I'll get a DJ gig, uh, if ever, like, again. Um, but I've, I don't like clubs. I don't like crowds. I don't like loud music. But I like to make people dance and have a good time. I like to, I don't know, create some kind of like emotional response with people or for people. Uh, so DJing or, or writing, the end game is the same, is create some kind of uh, emotion for, for the audience. So there's, I think there's a big similarity between what I was doing as a DJ and what I want to do as a, as a screenwriter. Except DJing, like after 20 years working at night, uh, you get to a point where you know I've I've done it. I've uh, you know I, I could I could give it up tomorrow. I'd be fine. I've done everything I wanted to do as a DJ. So it's uh, as a screenwriter now. I'm 
I'm barely starting out. So there's, you know, many more years to come. And I don't know what's going to happen. As a DJ, I know exactly what the next 20 years would be like, pretty much, you know? Wow, that's, so that was, that's a uh, fascinating story. Wow. How, do, uh, so, yeah, now you're about to embark on this writing or this like maybe a little bit more on a professional level might maybe like due to you have a lot had some successes already in competitions and i'm sh and i'm sure they're gonna they're gonna take your place and then we're gonna hear about that a little bit later um but when you started right you started writing 10 years ago uh, was is that right uh about 10 years uh but i wasn't really seriously writing then you know i, I started writing but like on and off uh, not knowing anything. I remember because I did study communications and journalism because at some point I thought, hey, I want to be a journalist. Mm. Then I realized, oh, a journalist, I have, I, I cannot make anything up. I have to, you know, report the cold, hard facts and go out and talk to people. And I was like, I don't like doing that. <laughs> and I, I, I did really good in my journalism classes, except uh, I made up most of the quotes and, and stories, uh, I'm ashamed to say. Then I realized, okay, so fiction is more my, uh, uh, my cup of tea. Uh, but I, I remember we had to read, because I took one class, Introduction to Filmmaking something, and we read that book by uh, Sid Field, I uh, mm -hmm. forget which one. But I, I found it uh, that it, I read it. I'm like, oh, this is taking the whole fun out of writing. It's way too structured. It's uh, you have to do this and this and and, and plot point and and structure. And I'm like, this this is not fun. And I I bought a, another book. I forgot the name, but it was a very thin book, just like basic formatting. And I was like, oh, like I uh, slug lines and this and that. Okay, I'm like, oh yeah, I know how to write. And I started writing. And it turned out I didn't know how to write because the the first feedbacks and notes I got were, were destroyed me, uh, not me, but destroyed what I, what I had written. Like it was, and looking back it, they, with reason, because it was terrible. The first three or four screenplays I, I wrote, I had no idea about character arc or development, or uh, I, just, I just went with it and it was really bad, extremely bad. So you decided then, then after, like, when did you realize they were bad? Um, there's one screenplay that I, uh, I sent to a guy um, through MySpace way back then. Oh God, <laughs> nobody remembers MySpace anymore. <laughs> and uh, he, he was kind enough to actually reply. Uh, and his answer was like in, in, in bold uppercase format everything that was wrong with my screenplay and I was like oh my god that's that was harsh because I thought I had something just I had the next best screenplay and I, I I didn't I had he said you have one good idea and that's it you don't know how to write a screenplay learn how to write a screenplay and I did some research and uh, I ended up buying uh uh, the, the, the Screenwriter's Bible by David Trottier, uh, fifth or sixth edition. And that, to, to that day, that's the one book I think everybody really should have. Um, that changed everything. That really, like, my writing got a lot stronger. Uh, my, my formatting and my, uh, my appreciation for storytelling and character arc and development uh, through that book. And then I knew a little bit more where I was going with the screenwriting. And it, it helped me. Like, I, 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 saw, I saw a dramatic change. Like, the, the, the same year I bought Trottier, uh, that was 2015, and I made the quarterfinals of the page uh, contest. I didn't go any further, but like, oh, okay, I am definitely in the right uh, direction. How did it feel getting to the page, like in the quarterfinals? How did that feel like? That must have been a huge win. I was, I was really excited. My mom was super thrilled. Um, I didn't see, I didn't think I, I would, I would do the quarterfinals. And when I did, I was like, wow, that's uh, that was extremely gratifying. And uh, I, uh, I had option to get feedback from the judges, and then I realized why you, that screenplay didn't go any further. Uh, I'd written a, a, a thriller. Anything else I wrote after that were comedies. At that point, I was still 
trying to figure out what am I good at. Uh, so I'd written a drama, I'd written a uh, horror screenplay, I'd written a comedy, and I was I'd submitted a, a thriller. And the, basically, the guy said it's really well written. It's um, it flows well. The, your characters are interesting, but the biggest scene of your screenplay that it doesn't offer anything new. Mm, and I I looked back and I said, you know, he he's right because. I, one of there's a movie that to that day I still love dearly. It's the, called the, the Last Seduction with uh, Linda Fiorentino, um, and I don't know why that movie. It's it's a simple thriller, but it works. It's there's not a wasted scene. Everything is just great. And I had written my own Last Seduction uh, based on that movie, and there were some similarities and. I guess it was kind of an homage to that movie, but because it was so close, or uh, even though it was different, it wasn't original enough to advance in the in the contest. But at least I knew that at that point, I knew okay, I'm getting the formatting done, I'm getting the structure down, I'm getting all those uh, parts of, uh, of screenwriting and starting to click together. Now it's just a matter of figuring figuring out what do I really like to write. And what do they want to read, the judges and the readers? I find the balance between what I feel I want to say, what I want to write, and what each contest is looking for, because that's also different. Different contests are looking for different type of screenplays. I would assume, like, if you, uh, the, the Nicole Fellowship, they're, I would assume they're looking for screenplays more serious. Like, they're looking maybe for the next Schindler's List. Uh, as opposed to the next American Pie, for example. Uh, if you write a, a goofy comedy like American Pie, you might do really well with Page or a screencraft comedy. You may not advance really far with Nicole because that's not really what they're looking for. I could be wrong, but I think it's also important to know what uh, what different contests are looking for. Yeah, that sounds... Wow, that's a great piece of advice. So... Wow, guys, I really hope you listened to that. You really paid attention to that because that sounds like that's, I, I think a lot of us, including myself, uh, and, and you should, at least a couple of years back as well, I, I really thought that that you had like any, like if it's a screenplay contest, you can just submit whatever screenplay and hope to win. But but really you're saying that there are, that they're looking for different things. So like, let's say like think. you, yeah, no, I think that's a great observation. Now you've written like, how many screenplays have you written so far? Uh, roughly uh, about ten. Yeah. Wow. So basically, and, uh, one, so one let's say what, uh, yeah, I, I uh, that was my goal. Like for the last ten years, I put out a brand new screenplay every year. Some great insights, Boris. And you've written a lot of screenplays. Then, um, how do you get your ideas? How do you choose your ideas for which screenplay to write? I um, I, I usually they. they they, they will they will come to me when I, when it comes to the point where okay I'll uh, I've taken enough time off from writing because usually like after a screenplay I take one or two months off where I don't want to I don't want to write anything because it's uh, you spend so many hours by yourself you know the computer that okay it's nice to take, to take a break from that and when I feel the that it's time to get back in, in into writing mode uh, it's I'll, ideas will just come to me I'll. Usually I have like four or five, and then I'll uh, okay, okay. I'll try to narrow it down to like two, and then one will stand out at some point. I'll get I'll get an insight like a flash, and I'll go, oh, that's the one. That's I, I could definitely uh, run with this. And um, one of the screenplay uh, that that made the the, the, the finals at the, the, the story pros, uh, I was actually. It was last summer during a heat wave, and I was uh, I was at home, and I decided, you know what, I I, I never watched True Blood. I watched True Blood. I have nothing else to do. It's uh, and it, it felt like it would work because it was really really hot in my apartment, and True Blood takes place in the south, and it's really hot and sticky and humid. I'm like, you know what, it's going to be like full immersion in the world of True Blood, and I'm watching a TV show about vampires, and I'm thinking, oh, but all this would make a great comedy if you if you could turn it up like turn it upside down because the whole idea is 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 finding an idea you 
I, that, I doubt you'll find an original idea that hasn't been done at this point. So the whole idea is find something that has been done, but it's, it sounds cliche, but do it in an original way. And I was watching True Blood and I thought, oh, but what, all the elements are there for great comedy. Uh, so what if vampires did come out and then, and then it turned out that the vampires were the good guys and the humans were the monsters? That's a different take on the vampire trope. And I, I thought, all right, uh, let's see what I can do with that. And nine months later, I had, a, I had a screenplay around that idea, and I submitted it, and it was good enough that it made the, the finals. Now, as far as how, why, I, I don't know, it's just, sometimes you just know you have an inside. It's just like a flash, and you go, boom, that's, uh, that's the one. And the, the other screenplay that year that made the finals, this one, I'd, uh, I'd written it in 20, 2017, I think. Because, okay, 2015, I had made the quarterfinals at Page with a thriller. Uh, 2016, I submitted something and I tanked. I bombed. Like, I didn't get anywhere. And the feedback was just like, it, it tore the writing apart. Because I thought, oh, I did good. I, I can't, I'm going to do even better. And, and I didn't. I, uh, I tried something and, and I failed. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try again something else. And 2017, I made the semifinals with a, with a comedy. At that point, I realized, okay, you know what? Comedy is my style. Uh, I, uh, I had a discussion with, a, with a, my, a cousin who was visiting from friends, and he was telling me that at, at this point in, in life, given the state of the world, and that was just, that was like four or five years, four years ago. So he was saying that, when he turns on the TV and starts watching a movie, if it's not entertaining or funny, he'll turn it off because he's like, there's, there's enough horrors and, and bad stuff in the world. I just want to watch something that makes me laugh for a couple of hours. And I thought, you know what? I think he's got a point. Uh, I like writing comedies. I'm good at it. Uh, people want to laugh. Um, that's going to be me. That's, I'm going to do comedies. And I, I find my voice. I know I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm good at it. So I went with comedies, and that, the screenplay in 2017 uh, that reached the semifinals, the idea was, uh, okay, I don't know why I, I thought uh, it, it was a ghost story, a supernatural comedy, but the premise was, okay, what about, I, uh, you had a movie about a ghost, but the ghost, uh, for some reason, didn't know how to do any of the things we, su we usually see ghosts do in movies. Doesn't know how to go through walls. Doesn't know how to move every, anything with the power of his or her mind. A uh, totally useless ghost. And I thought, well, that, that could be funny. That, that could be funny. So I took that idea and, uh, and I went with it. Wow, I love that. Like, I think, a lot of, I think a lot, at least I also work with a lot of writers, like new writers, and a lot of them are writing comedies. And it was also my kind of impression looking at all the Facebook groups. Um, and I know, like, from my own experience, well, and from everything I read, it seems like comedy is probably one of the hardest genres to write. But somehow you made it work. You, you actually know you can write a quality comedy that can go big in, in, these, in several competitions. Do you have any, I, like, advice for new writers who want to hmm. write a comedy? What, what, are the, what are the ball pits? What, are the, what should they look out for? Or how, or maybe what, how can they do it? How can they write a good quality comedies i don't know i think you, either you have an innate uh, ability to to know uh, what is funny or you or you don't uh, i don't think comedy can be taught and I, i've heard time and time again that comedy is the hardest thing to write but it never felt that way to me it, it just comes uh it comes naturally i don't really know if uh, i i think it's you ha you know, you know it's gonna be funny. At least to some to some people, I don't think that what I write would be funny to everybody. But uh, hopefully, there would be a large segment of the audience that would resonate with that type of humor. Also, there's there's different types of humor. Like the, the screenplays I wrote, I I don't write screenplay. I don't I didn't write American Pie movies. Uh, I don't want to say they're I don't want to use the word smart comedies because I don't want to use the word smart, but 
uh, well, it's it's not raunchy humor. Like it's it's maybe more elevated because uh, you can you can be really successful uh, writing American Pie, but I don't think I would be happy with myself. Uh, I don't. It wouldn't be fun for me to write a, a movie like that. I probably would enjoy the paycheck that comes with it, but I don't think I would be fulfilling it. It's it's not my brand of humor. So I, if you want to write comedy first, you have to know okay, what brand of humor are you comfortable with? What brand of humor do you know? And if you want to go and write the next American Pie because that's your thing, or uh, Harold and Kumar, go for it. There's definitely, obviously, a market for it. But it's it it. It, to me, it's not it's not the, the the type of humor I have I have in my daily life. I'm a very bit, bit more sarcastic. Uh, I think uh, my my humor has always been well, it's it's never been raunchy or like too on the nose or uh, although I can appreciate it, but it's just not my type of humor. So I think yeah, if you want to write comedy, find out which brand of comedy you're good at, and then. Uh, and then roll with it. Well, I think that's a great advice. I hope you're listening out, out there for everyone who want, want to write comedies. I, lo- I love the, I love this. Um, so let's talk a little about like the competitions. Now, I know you have made it pretty far in several competitions. Of course, I'm assuming the, the, the furthest you've got is the, is the finalist at the Story Pros. Is that correct? Uh, that would be, yeah, yeah the furthest did I'd get was finalist at, uh, story pros for, uh, with two screenplays. So and one of them, one of them that year was, was brand new from the year I submitted it. The other one was the one that had reached the semifinals in 2017 at page, uh, that I rewrote and I did a rewrite that bombed. It was awful because I, uh, I took all the feedback and I wanted and I wanted to elevate the screenplay so much that I took every single note and, and used it. And it was a big mistake because the stuff I used and I went against my own intuition. Mm. So I changed stuff that I knew I didn't want to change, but I thought uh, maybe those readers, they know better. Um, so the rewrites completely bombed. I, uh, it became a, a worse screenplay, a really bad screenplay. So I, I re I re re I, I wrote it like probably like this like maybe like sixteen drafts of that screenplay uh, up, like up till now. So I, I, after it bombed, I, I rewrote it. I, I kept most of the notes because some notes were actually very very clever and insightful and helpful. Um, but the notes that I was uncomfortable with that I could feel with were taking the screenplay away from me, I, um, I get rid of those and I, and I rebuild the screenplay according to my own uh, taste as opposed to just following blindly the list of points uh, judges and readers said I should change in the screenplay. Wow, I love that. Um, very fa- Very interesting. I love hearing about this. So now you have like, how does it work? Like, you enter the competition. Now you're kind of you you're getting told throughout the process that you are advancing. Now you're getting that the, I'm assuming the email about you reached the finalist. Like how did that how did that feel like? That must have been an, a crazy feeling. I was extremely no, I was I was super happy. Uh, but like with each step, like quarterfinals and semifinals, and then when I had two in the final round, I was like, oh that there's good chances at least one of those will be in the top three. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I was still, uh, I was still super happy. Like every time I, uh, I place, even if it's just quarterfinals or semifinals or whatever, it's, uh, it's an incentive to keep going. At least it's, it's like, wait, there are some people who read it and thought it was good enough to put it in the, in the good pile, uh, as opposed to just toss it away. So, uh, any any time I a screenplay places in the competition, it's uh, even if it's just yeah quarter semis. So to me, it's, it's 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 a big win, especially because you know that so many other screenplays didn't, and yours did. So that's uh, that's always extremely gratifying, and it's it's a motivation 
if you ever doubt, uh, maybe I should, because I've been at it for 10 years and nothing happens, and then this happens, and I go, well, no, I must be doing something right. Because uh, you will, at some point, I, I'm assuming, reach the point where you go, what do I do? Do I keep, do I keep at it, or do I just give up? It's been 10 years. Let's be realistic. But in my case, I've, it, because it's also part of how I see life in general, uh when i wanted to be a dj i thought you know what i'm gonna go be a dj and people say well that's that's ridiculous you don't even know how to play music you have no background like i i learn i uh, and that i'll be a dj and that will be it and i did and my first dj gig i got fired halfway through because i sucked i wasn't any good because in my mind i was going to become a good dj within you know a couple of weeks uh, uh nothing could have been further from the truth it actually took me like a good two years of practicing with turntables back then to be good. So my first DJ, I got fired. The guy said, I like your music selection, but you can't mix for shit. Go home, practice, come back, come, come back when you're ready. And I went home and I practiced for you. And I went back to the same club and the guy said, Oh, great. I'll give you Saturday nights. And because I've always knew like, you know what this is, I could feel it. And I'm one of those people who, I'll, I'll say often, you know, I create my own reality. And if I believe in something with my whole body, with my soul, with my heart, there's not a force that can stop me. Uh, that's why I try to stay. Uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll log into the, the screenwriters group on Facebook sometimes and, I, and I'll read the posts. But I try to stay away because a lot of people use those forums to share their negative experiences with the, the industry or the negative beliefs. And I'm, my old philosophy is that it's not because, you know, a thousand people had a bad experience or a negative experience with the industry that mine has to be the same. But all those people who had negative experiences, they want, they want you to feel that that's what you're getting yourself into. And I've always, always thought it doesn't have to be that way. I am, I, I, I have enough control in my life. I'll, uh, it's, it's, it may sound stupid, like it's a little bit like esoteric or you know spiritual, but if yeah, I, I do wholeheartedly believe that if if you want something and and you believe with every fiber of your being that it's going to happen, it will happen. Uh, obviously, in the, for screenwriting, it cannot happen overnight because it's not something that can manifest quickly. You have to get good at writing, so that's a process. But if the whole process through, through the whole process, you, you, you keep learning and you don't, uh, you're always happy. But if writing keeps making you happy through the whole process and you keep at it and you keep at it and you incorporate the notes and you, uh, you, you become the best writer you can be and each screenplay is the best screenplay you ever wrote, at some point, something will happen. Wow. How, um, how do you keep yourself motivated? Uh, I don't, so far, I haven't really need to keep myself motivated. It's just because I, 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 uh, I like it so much. Like this, the feeling when you, when you've written like a great scene or, uh, you've written a great piece of dialogue or when you finished a, a strong draft, um, it's addictive to me. It's, uh, this, the, the, the joy of writing is just, uh, it's a, it's a love hate relationship because there are days where you just hate it because it's just not coming out and you're stuck on a scene and it's, you, you try everything and you go this, okay, this screenplay is dead. It's not going anywhere and I'm stuck halfway and there's no way it's not good working out. And that's where you need to unplug like for a couple of hours or a day and go do something else. And then, and oh, it will click out of nowhere. And then you go back to it and you go, oh my God, that was so easy. And then, you know, the rest is a breeze until you, you hit the next spot where you struggle and you want to quit and you, you know, just keep going. But the motivation is just because I, I, I love writing and it's because I, uh, I want to see the final product someday on a screen. That's the end game. With, you know, I, want to see, I want to see a movie with the credits and written by Boris Cole on the screen. That's, uh, that's the motivation. That's, I love uh, that. I, it, great. No, I think that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, just, again, just, yeah, love, love the process and keep yeah. going and, and be proud of what you, what you do. I, I think that's, a, I think everyone should really remember, let's just get it, get it into your brain, everyone. 
Um, it's not for the money. Like it's, I've never written thinking I'll make millions of dollars. Uh, I just want to make a comfortable living doing it. It's not for the money or the status it would bring me. Uh, I, I think if you get into writing just because you want to get rich or because you want to have the status that goes along with being part of you know, the Hollywood uh, industry, these aren't the right reasons. That's, these, are like, these, these are ego reasons. But if you go into it because writing fulfills you, there's something you have stories to tell and because you know that those stories uh, will impact people, not necessarily because I used to think, oh, I want to write the movie that's going to change people's life. But that was my ego. I, wanna, I may still write it someday. But at this point, I just want to write movies that make people, you know, spend a good, have a good time for like, you know, an hour and a half, 90 minutes, forget about everything, have a few laughs and walk out with a smile on your face. That's the whole, that's the whole point. That, that's all I want right now. Also, because writing the movie that's going to change people's lives, I've, it's, it's, it's really hard. I've tried. It's like, I, it's, you have to, <laughs> if you want to write the very profound drama that is going to, you know, create some kind of like emotional re- response and somebody will change their whole life. I'm like, I, uh, it's, it's, it's too heavy for me. I don't think I have the, maybe, maybe when I'm older in my life, I'll be able to, uh, at this point, I'm going to stick with, uh, with comedies. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing all that, Boris. Um, just to get, like, yeah, I'm just, Man, that's a, that's great. I, I I love it. Yeah, you, I could talk with you all day, I think. But just to get just to get moving, I um. Now you you did became a finalist of the Story Pros International Screenplay Contest. Now you did share with me a little before this interview that something might have happened with one of the screenplays. Is that something you can share with us? Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, so, so one of the two screenplays, the 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 comedy about the the ghost who doesn't know how to be a ghost. Uh, I put it up on uh, on Inktip, uh, and then I uh, also so in Inktip is a service where you can host your screenplay online, and people uh, can read the, the the log line or the the summary, the synopsis, download the screenplay. And I also optioned uh, to get the log line sent out uh, to the whole database of uh, industry people. Uh, but those people only see the title and the log line. They don't, they, there's no, so, uh, no synopsis, no screenplay. So through the uh, ink tip, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, the, the log line magazine, I guess. Uh, one, so one producer read the, title and the log line and and email me and say hey i uh, i read the log line it that sounds like a fun story to read uh could you email me a copy of the screenplay and i uh i did and that was it actually for the longest time uh i i didn't hear from him from uh from quite a while uh my mom was like did you email him back i'm like no you can't you can't push those people uh, it's also against my beliefs. Like I believe that when things are meant to happen, they will happen. Uh, and me, I have one screenplay I'm trying to push. Somebody establishing in in the industry, they might be juggling twenty projects right now. They'll they'll get to me when they have the time. And the people who want to people who read your work and want to work with you, they'll they'll get in touch. They'll find you. They'll email you back. So if nothing happens, it's not the end of the, the, end of the world. But after a few months, um, like I, uh, I had finished another like another rewrite of that screenplay, like like four or five new drafts from the screenplay I submitted to the guy. And so at that point, I actually reached out. I said, "Hey, uh, you reached you 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 emailed me a few months ago about that screenplay. I sent it to you. I just wanted to let you know that I'd done quite a few rewrites then, uh, since then, and you might be interested because it's a it's a much stronger screenplay." Than, than you read the first time around. And he was, uh, he was very happy. He said, yeah, send, send it over. And I did. And, and shortly after, he emailed back again. He loved it. And it's, it's taken some time. But uh, as it stands now, uh, he, he has a, he's found a production company based in Virginia. Uh, they have the screenplay. They liked it. Uh, they're on board. So far, nothing has been signed or any, uh, nothing, 
but they're interested. They like the idea. He, he also found an actress uh, um, that he represents uh, who would be great for the lead role. And I've, I've seen her uh, reel and I was like, wow, yeah, she's really, really good. And she, she read the screenplay and she loved it. I'm supposed to talk to her at some point this week. So things, things are moving. Things are the furthest they've ever been for me. Exciting. Uh, uh, with the writing. And that's very, 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 very exciting. So I, I spoke with, the, with the Dennis, the, the, the producer, uh, Sunday or a couple of days ago. And that was the first time I, I've, I've spoken with him. And it, it was wonderful because, well, I had to be honest with him. I, I told him, listen, I have, I'm in complete uncharted territory here. I've, I've been writing for all these years. I have no idea what happens uh, after. I've never been on that on that side of the development. I, I don't know what what it entails legally, financially, business wise. Uh, and it was extremely helpful. Like any question I uh, I had, uh, willing to take the time to uh, to answer me, explain a little bit uh, in detail what he was trying to do, uh, putting together the open structure and bring it to the production company. Uh, he did mention that if things weren't to uh, to move forward and the project was 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 greenlit and production started, like he would want me uh, on location in, in Virginia on set uh, because he's like that's that's your screenplay, you know. Uh, so if anything should be rewritten, it should be by you. Uh, like I don't think he wants anybody else involved with the uh, with rewrites. Should there be any? So. Like, Things are happening. So, like, like I said, nothing has been signed yet. Um, I've yet to spoke to speak with the actress. I've yet to speak with the, the people uh, in Virginia. But I'm like, hey, there, there are more and more people who are reading that screenplay are going, hey, this this needs to be made. We can do this. This is uh, this is good enough. So I'm very very excited about that. Man, that's amazing. I, I, I'm hope, I hope and do, I really hope that this goes through and, and, it, and it comes a movie out of it. It will be incredible. I'm so happy for you, Boris. And like for any, for I, I'm sure a lot of out there are, are thinking, you know, I would like to do that too. I would like to get to a place where people actually want to not only like read my screenplay, but also maybe buy it and actually make, make the screenplay into something real. Do you have any advice? Like, just we, of course, screenwriting is a huge process. But do you feel like what would you say it takes to get to a level where your screenplay is that good, so that other people would actually read it? How can, how do you get there? Like, just just a few points. If you have any, uh, well, the most uh, well, I don't know if it's the most important, but one of the definite thing that you need to to do is really, really uh, master the the formatting, like so that. People they open your screenplay, and within two pages they'll know. Okay, he he knows the he knows how to write a screenplay. Um, and I saw, I've only read the the David Trottier book. For me, that was enough. And I read uh, the, another one by uh, that I've because I've seen this guy in the in the screenwriting group who wrote a uh, screenwriting book called uh, uh, "That's Not the Way It Works." Um, I read that, and that was uh, that was very it was very useful because it 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 cemented the few ideas that I had. That um, basically it said, do write it any way is best for you. Like any, any there are no rules. Just uh, whatever helps you write the best version of the screenplay is what you have to do. Uh, if you don't follow the regular three act structure, nobody cares. If you don't really have a, a protagonist or an antagonist, or you do things different, nobody will care. As long as the whole idea is that every page they want to keep turning to the next page, they want to. They that, that that's the whole point. If the story is good, if the characters are interesting and the dialogue is good, anything you can do to to if you're not sure how to write a montage or anything like that, just do the way, do it the way you feel is the most appropriate and make your screenplay interesting to read. But if, if you, if you read all those, uh, uh, save the cat and all that, like, there are so many books about 
how to properly format a screenplay, you'll be so afraid uh, not to follow the rules that you'll get you you won't go anywhere. You won't even start writing because you're like, I don't, you know, what if uh, if I have to follow all these rules? Then where, well, first of all, where where does my creativity go? Like I have to be able to express myself within the rules, but at the same time, know that there there will come a point. Like in my screenplays, there are points where you know what the, the rules just didn't make any sense for me to to follow. Uh, the, the whole idea was that I have to make my screenplay interesting and and unique and and it, right in, in such a way that eventually it would come to a point where people could read that screen and I go, oh, that, that I know who wrote it, even if my name wouldn't be on it. They might be able to tell that's his style of screenwriting. Uh, and that's why you know, I, people say, you know, you, you need to read a lot of screenplays. I've, I think I've read like seven screenplays. I'm ashamed to say uh, every screenwriter that spent, you know, so many hours reading other screenplays by other like established screenwriters. I read, I read one screenplay in each genre. I read a comedy, I read a thriller, I read a horror, I read a drama, I read sci-fi, just to see uh, how they did it. And then I felt, you know what, if, if I keep reading screenplays, uh, I'm going to be writing like all those other screenwriters. And I'm not gonna, it's not going to be original. I'm going to be writing exactly the same way they do. And that's not going to be me writing. It's going to be them through me. That's not fun. That's not, that's not going to get me anywhere. Fascinating. And I think those people who were uh, like somebody like uh, Shane Black, I don't think he follows any rules. He writes the screenplay. He writes the stories. Well, he, because he can do it. He's established. But even when he was starting out, when he wrote the last uh, Boy Scout, he wrote stuff that you read and you go, oh my God, can you put that in a screenplay? And that's exactly because he did it when nobody else would. That a producer goes, oh, that really stands out. I, uh, I like this. This gets me, I, ca I can shoot this, but I get a really good feeling of what the scene is like, of what the tone of the movie is like. Even though what you wrote, it's, it's, not, it's not doable. But I like it, and, and we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do whatever we can to, 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 to get that tone across. Or that idea across. I think there's a lot of writers out there, just like you and me, who, who, who which have English as the second language. How did like did you struggle with that in the beginning, or like how did you like how did you feel about writing in a second language, and how like what what has your experience been with it? Uh, that was okay. English is my second language, but uh, okay, I, when I was 18, I spent one year in the States, so I did. By, by the end of that year in the host family, I was fluent in English, uh, spoken English, written, you know, it's always different also uh, because I didn't, I, I learned English through radio and talking to people. So I didn't learn the, the proper, uh, through like grammar books or anything like that. I, I, I learned spoken street English. Uh, then I, I moved to, I lived in Montreal. I went to university in English, because in Montreal you have the option, you, know, you have French-speaking universities or English-speaking universities, and I thought, well, you know, I, I know French, so uh, if I'm going to university, I might as well do it in English. And so I had to, you know, hand out essays, and at first it was it was hard, and then I, it got, you know, it got really easy. But now, when it came to writing a screenplay with as little errors as possible. Uh, the first couple of screenplays, uh, that was really hard. I was lucky that a friend of mine um, who's American and who studied English literature and is really good with grammar and everything and, and time concordance and all that, uh, she, she read my first two screenplays and she corrected everything that was wrong grammatically, the syntax, the spelling, whatever. Uh, there was... Like the first screenplay she corrected for me, like I think like every other line, like every other paragraph, they were like, you know, like stuff underlined in red. Uh, constant, like every page, like, you know, 10, 20 mistakes. Uh, not just spelling, but just like basic syntax, grammar and all that. And that, that, was, that was the most 
that was the greatest help I've got as far as uh, being able to write properly. Because uh, all those mistakes that she pointed out once, I never made them again. You know, so it took me like one screenplay that she went with me through every single time. I, uh, there's an adverb I read that should have been, you know, before the verb and not after, or, you know, things like that. And because she took the time to help me and it, stu it stuck with me. And then after that, every other screenplay I wrote, you'll still find mistakes like every now and then. But uh, like most recently, my mom corrected the latest one and she's like, English is not her first language either. But uh, she's uh, she's good enough that she she was able to correct a few things and like do a couple of typos and spelling mistakes, but nothing nothing major, uh, nothing that would make a producer go yeah he, that guy doesn't know how to write English at all. So it's huh? it's it's it's, a, it's harder, but at the same time, what is your option? I I don't, I don't want to write for the French market. I have no interest in writing a, a screenplay in French. So uh, yeah, I, know, I can totally, I can you totally know, feel so you. I had the same. Like I, I for many years, I didn't want to write. Like I'm from Denmark, and I didn't want to write in Danish. Um, now I just recently started doing that because I started to get opportun like a lot of opportunities started to appear here. So I've changed that. But but yeah, I, for like the first many years, I wrote screenplays. I refused to write in my own language because I I wanted to go to Hollywood basically. But I totally totally hear you. Um, so uh, if if you want to write yeah, in English and it's not your first language, uh, well, you write the write the whole thing and then f find somebody uh, who's willing, who, who know like who like most likely somebody like preferably somebody whose first language is English, uh, who, who maybe I studied English lit or anything like somebody who really knows uh, and see if they're willing to, to to help you with you know fixing basic mistakes and. You'll do those mistakes once or twice, and, and then and then your brain will just, I don't know, it will click, and you won't do those again. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful advice. Um, and yeah, I think my final question for is, if you could go back to a younger version of yourself who's just about to start writing his first screenplay, what advice would you, would you give that guy? Uh, don't assume that the first screenplay is going to be good and go and, and get a, a formatting book right away. Uh, so yeah, don't assume you, you, you know how to write a screenplay just because you think you do. That, that was the mistake I thought because I, I, I had flipped through a couple of screenplays online. Um, and I said, okay, there's this slug line, there's this and that and this. Okay, perfect. I know what you do. I've seen it. I can do it. Um, and if for my first screenplay, I'd taken the time to read a book like the, like the Screenwriter's Bible, uh, most likely, definitely, uh, uh, I think I would have started placing in contest three or four years sooner. Because for three years, I, uh, I didn't really know anything. But I just assumed I did because I read a couple of screenplays and, and read a very, very thin, I forgot the name, a thin book. Like it was so thin, it was with a yellow cover. And it, it covered just like the very basics of, of structure and, and formatting. And I, I wish I'd gotten, I'd spent more time learning a little bit more about the craft before I started writing, you know, because the, the ideas weren't going to go anywhere. They were going to be there, you know, in six months or in a year. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's a, that's a great piece of advice as, as everything else you've shared with us. It's, it's been absolutely incredible to listen to you. I, and again, I could do this. I could keep doing this. Um, and also guys, every, everyone listening, I'll also highly recommend the David Trudier's, uh, screenwriting book about the screenwriting bible and also bob saint's book um which i will i will try to get i'll post some links down in the description for you so that you can find these books because they are absolutely worth your time especially if you're starting out and probably save you a lot of a lot of years and a lot of failed scripts so definitely check them out and uh boris i want to thank you wholeheartedly for taking the time to sit here and talk with us it i i had a blast listening to you i hope everyone else did too and um, do you have anything, any final things you want to say to people? Uh, 
there's one thing actually. Um, it's it, in terms of structure. I don't know if uh, if that may help some people. I know it really changed my writing uh, when I read about something called the uh, the mini movie method, uh, and it's it's a it's a slightly different approach to this three act structure. It breaks down the, the screenplay in eight short stories of roughly eight to fifteen pages each. So as opposed to having to write like a whole first act and then a very, very long second act and a third act, it, it, you write eight short stories that link together to create the whole picture. Uh, and it made the task uh, a lot less uh, scary, especially when you tackle the second act because like, oh, geez, I have to fill in 60 pages of writing in the second act, that's a lot of or 50 pages or whatever. And you, you could be staring at that and just completely freeze. But um, that's what I've been, I've been using some version of that, of the mini movie method so far. And I, I've really broken down my first act in two short stories of like eight, 15 pages. Then the second act is like four short stories. So as opposed to go, and, oh, I have to write the whole second act. Well, no, today I just have to write one short story, like the couple of scenes, like eight, 15 pages. I can do that. I can, well, I, can, I can write a short story today or this week. You know, that would be my, if by the end of the week, I have the first short segment of the second act done. That's great. Uh, so I, I think you can look it up online. Uh, I forgot who started doing it, uh, but... I think it's, yeah, it's called the mini movie method, and you just break break down your your screenplays in eight short stories that link together and work together to create your final screenplay. And when I started doing that, things got a whole lot easier for me uh, from a writing uh, point of view. Incredible! I think that's a great way to finish it off. Again, Boris, thank you for sharing all of that, and. Absolutely a blast having you here. I hope you'll come back sometime. And uh, uh, hopefully with, with, with great news, I would love to come back, but it's been a pleasure. And, uh, I didn't think I would enjoy it, you know, because like most writers, I like to keep to myself, but that was, that was in, incredibly fun. And it helped me also organize my thoughts about, hey, uh, why am I a writer? It's a, it was a good exercise, stepping out of that comfort zone a little bit. I hope you guys got as much out of this interview as I did. I thought it was an absolute blast chatting with Boris. Uh, I hope you guys felt the same. That was, I, to me, the, like there was so many insights. There were so many fascinating um, things that you were able to share. That I, I really hope you got you guys paid attention. Um, actually, I want to know right now, down in the comment section below, what were your biggest takeaways? And also, don't forget to smash the like button and show Boris some love. Now, this was the first episode of the series few, and the next episode is going to drop within a few days, and um, that is actually a, a very another amazing new writer, and he actually just very recently got praised by the author of That's Not The Way, way It Works, Bob Saints. So if you want to find out who exactly this writer is, make sure to subscribe to the channel, watch out for the interview, and until next time, my friends. Keep writing.